Hi everyone, my name is Rob Gordon and I'm the missions counselor here at Washington County Community College and I'm going to take you on a virtual tour of our campus today. Uh, so come on inside, it's a beautiful day here in Calais and uh, we're going to go around and show you the whole campus, so follow me. So the first stop on our tour today is Student Services, located right inside the main entrance of the college. And what we do here is uh, we get you through the whole process of when you apply, all the way through to you're ready to get registered for classes. Um, once you're ready to get registered for classes, we send you over across the hall over here to Donna Giel, and Donna helps you uh, register uh, for all your classes. Also in the suite is our financial aid uh, director, Linda Fitzsimmons. So if you ever have any questions on financial aid, you give us a call, we'll send you over to Linda, and she'll help you there. Um, and like I said, if you have any questions for student services or getting your application through, um, give us a call. We're a very small college and you'll talk to Lisa right at the front desk. Now we're going to head down to the cafeteria, which is just down the hall from student services. Come on with me. So now we're in Riverview Dining Hall. Um, as you can see, it's not, as, not a very big space. Uh, but it doesn't really have to be because it's not like high school. Uh, we don't have set times here at the college for people to come down and eat. Uh, students can go in and out all day uh, pretty much, um, eating when they feel like it. So we don't need a huge space for that. We're a small college. Um, and uh, the Rivu Dining Hall has uh, daily specials. Um, they have a small menu and they have some combos for students to uh, choose from. Um, also, if you live in the dorms, your uh, part of your dorm fee is the meal plan. So uh, when you uh, get to school, uh, you will get a little in-house kind of debit card thing. And uh, you, every time you come down to buy something here at the, the dining hall, um, you, they'll swipe your card and that comes off the balance. Um, you'll see you know, later on in the tour, uh, all of our dorms are apartments with full kitchens, uh, which uh, so that means a lot of students can cook for themselves too that live in the dorms. But so most students come down and eat here uh, for breakfast and, and maybe lunch. And so uh, the dining hall is open Monday through Thursday, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then on Fridays it's only open from uh, breakfast to lunch. The uh, reason why is um, you know Fridays half our programs don't have classes on Fridays, mostly just the trades, and the trades are done by noontime. So. Uh, people either hang out in the dorms or head home for the weekend, depending on how far away they live. Um, so it's pretty pretty slow down here in the college, so um, they close up uh, early on Fridays. And the students uh, do um, have to cook for themselves over the weekend that live in the dorms, but as I said, there's a full kitchen in each dorm. So um, over here is our bookstore. Uh, closed up right now because, you know, uh, during the break. But um, the bookstores where you come and get all your books, it's all online now. Um, if you go to our website on our homepage, uh, you'll see a link for the bookstore. And you can do all your, um, your shopping for your books right online. And then once you choose everything you want, um, you can come in and Rob in the bookstore will take care of you. Um, and then also, also in the dining area is the Riverview Lounge, located behind me. And the lounge is a place for students to come and kind of just chill out between classes. There's computers in there, um, TV in there. Um, also, uh, two offices, one for Ben Collins, who's the assistant director of the dorms and also the director of student activities. And Mary Ann Urquhart, uh, his office is in there, and she's the uh, ambassador here for Embark and also JMG. So if you are part of Embark in high school or JMG, um, she will be um, contacting you and you'll work with her during, during your time here at the college. Uh, next stop we're going to make is uh, we're going to actually head upstairs um, to the library so you can come on with me. So here we are in the library. Uh, the library is located upstairs. Uh, pretty much the whole second floor of the college is the library. There is one classroom up here that gets used but most of the upstairs is the library. Uh, most people know what a library is, but a few things to uh, point out about the library is um, if you're planning on doing a project or if you're looking for a certain book that you just want to read, um, come upstairs. That We have a great selection here, but if there's something that you're looking for that isn't here, talk to one of the librarians. And we're part of an interstate uh, collaboration, 
So if they can check the database, and if any of a lot of the different libraries around the state have that book you're looking for, they can get it here within a week or so for your use. So, um, so that's a great advantage here. Uh, another thing about the library is, um, you know, there's a computer lab in here. So the computer lab and the library is most of the time, 99% of the time, uh, for student use only. Once in a great while, an instructor will have to book it out to do a, some kind of class project um, on the computers. And once in a while, there's testing going on in here. But most of the time, it's open for student use. So I usually tell students, if you're looking to jump on a computer, um, best bet is just to run to the library and um, and jump on one of the computers. But even if one of this computer lab is being used and you come up, I mean, there's a ton of uh, kiosks in the in the library with computers. So um, you know you got plenty of spaces here to jump on a computer um, if the computer lab is being used. Um, so that's that's an advantage too. Uh, another thing, the reading room. The reading room here. Um, is uh, filled with updated magazines and newspapers, local newspapers mostly. Um, so, you know, if you want to come in, uh, check those out. Most of the magazines are, uh, you know, are, are based with most of the programs here, the trades and other programs. So, you know, all of them are the topics are, are happen to be with the trades. And so, come on in, you can hang out there. Um, and then, you got a really great space. Um, just to kind of chill out. Uh, it, does, it doesn't matter. You could be studying or you could just come up to relax, want a little quiet time, um, you know, do a puzzle, read a book, um, just kind of sit and, you know, think about the day. It's a great place to uh, come up to and hang out. Beautiful view of the river and um, it, it's just really good. More kiosks with computers and a uh, great space to u utilize while you're here. So, um, next stop we're going to make is we're going to head up the main hallway on, uh, downstairs and I'll show you a few important um, places along the way of the main hallway. So follow me. So here we are at the, the intersection of the three and four hundreds. Um, I say that each section of the college is numbered. Uh, down by student services is the one hundreds. Upstairs the library is the two hundreds. And then you get up to here to the intersection of, of the main hallway. You have the three hundreds. You can see the three hundreds on the wall. And each classroom has a number with it. Uh, 301 right here is called the fishbowl. The fishbowl is one of those classrooms where you're pretty much guaranteed to have a class in it while you're here. It doesn't matter what program you're in uh, because it gets used a lot with math and English and stuff like that. So, um, so you're definitely guaranteed to have a, a class in 301. And um, down here in the 300s, we have a bunch of different cl uh, classrooms, computer labs. Um, this section is utilized by um, business management, computer technology, medical uh, system, medical office technology, and adventure recreation tourism. Um, so, um, so very busy section. So we'll come down and check out the computer technology uh, shop. One down this way. So here we are in the computer technology uh, programs uh, classroom or shop almost. Um, as you can see, um, a lot of computers around. Some of them are down inside. These ones flip up. Um, but uh, students in the computer technology program spend their time in here learning how to basically build a computer from the ground up and keep it running, you know, um, after that. Um, also a little bit of networking and stuff. Uh, so uh, uh, they spend a lot of time in here. This isn't, this, even though this is a computer lab, um, it's not a computer lab for student use. Uh, so if you're kind of walking by, you see there's not many people in here and there's computers set up. Um, you can't just come right in and jump on this one. Uh, because um, this is a closed system, like a regular student can't come in and, and log in to use it because uh, the students in this program um, uh, learn to deal with viruses and stuff, so to do that, they don't want those viruses getting out into the main system, so everything's kind of closed in here. So uh, students can't use this for their use, uh, you know, if they need a computer. But right next door is 317 and 316. Uh, two computer labs um, that you will be able to use if there's not a class going on. So I'll take you over there and I'll show you um, what those ones look like. So let's head over there right now. So here we are in uh, the computer lab 317. Um, 317 is used a lot by our business management program. So students come in and um, you know spend a lot of time here when they're in business management. But 
Um, each door or each classroom, doesn't matter if it's a computer lab or a classroom, uh, are going to have a piece of paper hanging outside the door that says their class schedule for that classroom or computer lab. So, you know, if it's 9 o'clock on a Monday morning and you need a computer, and you're coming down the hallway, um, you know, if you look on the door and it says there's not a class in here until noontime, 1 o'clock, um, you can, you know, feel free to jump in here and use a computer as long as you need to until the class starts, basically. So, um, feel free, don't, don't be shy on using the computer labs if there's not a class going on. Obviously, see a bunch of people start to pile in, getting ready to, you know, take their class, you might want to save your stuff and, you know, if you still need a computer, head for the library, as I said earlier, but, um, but the computer labs down here in the 300s, if they're not being used, the, you know, feel free to jump onto one of them. Uh, well, I'll take you over, I'll show you 316 real quick, um, the other computer lab down here in the 300s, um, and then we'll move on from there. So, follow me. So here we are in uh, the computer lab 316, um, pretty much the same as 317, that gets used a lot uh, by medical assisting and metal, medical office technology, um, but same uh, rules as 317, you know, if you come down around, need a computer, um, nobody in here, like right now, jump on, check the schedule outside the door, and then jump on a computer, and uh, you know, jump on and use it as long as you want. Uh, we'll head over, we're going to head down to uh, the, the last classroom in the 300s, which is the Adventure Recreation and Tourism uh, classroom, so we'll head down there. Here we are in the Adventure Recreation and Tourism programs classroom. Um, being in that program uh, involves being outdoors a lot. But also, you know, you're going to be in here uh, learning a lot before you actually go out and do it. Um, conservation law, criminal justice conservation law students will spend some time in here as well, um, learning different aspects of outdoor um, leadership and stuff. So, uh, very busy classroom, very busy program, and a um, great environment to learn if you want to be a rich main guide or a game warden uh, someday, or even just as, as an outdoor educator. So. Um, yeah, great, great show, uh, classroom to work in. Uh, now we're going to head down to the 400s, and I'll show you uh, automotive technology, residential commercial electricity, and I'll show you a few other things along the way. So we'll head down that way. Oh, by the way, on the way down to the 400s, I figure I'd point out this is our Skills USA Hall of Championships display, um, and so. What this is, is if you competed in SkillsUSA in high school, we actually compete as post-secondary, college level. Um, so uh, we just started doing the whole pitcher thing a few years ago, but, but we've had many other winners, but um, we, unfortunately we didn't get their pitchers. But, um, but yeah, we, if you want to compete um, the same or different um, competitions that you did in high school, um, you can, but now you'll be uh, competing for WCC at the post-secondary level. Make sure you talk to us about that if you're interested. So here we are in the 400s and our first stop is our medical assisting programs and our phlebotomy programs classroom. Um, as you can see, lots of equipment in here to uh, learn about um, hands-on patient care. And um, you know this, uh, this program, especially the medical assistant program, is a national certification. So uh, even though you learn here in Calais, Maine, um, you will get a national certification through the program, so you can, if you move to the West Coast, uh, you can still work as a medical assistant um, there. So, uh, great opportunities by taking these programs. Um, the next stop we're going to make is down to the science lab, and so we'll head that way right now. So here we are in the science lab. Uh, not all programs uh, require a science, but um, you know, usually it depends on if you go with your certificate program, associate's degree. Um, and some programs do have a science requirement, but the great thing about this classroom is the instructor makes everything fun to learn. And I'll tell you what, when I went here uh, many moons ago, that's what I loved about WCC. The instructors make everything fun to learn, and, and it really sticks in your head very well, and you remember it when it's been, when it's been interesting to learn something. Uh, I loved it. Did you love it? I, you, I'm sure you love it too, but um, you know, it's just a great environment to learn in. Uh, so we're going to head down the hallway and we're going to go visit the study center and then residence commercial electricity and auto technology. So come on down. So here we are in the study center and our TRIO program is housed in the study center. Um, and uh, basically I always bring 
any student I tour, it doesn't matter if it's just one student or 50 students I'm touring, I bring them here. And the reason why is, a lot of people don't realize, but WCCC gets voted pretty much every year or every other year by different organizations around the country. Um, as we, they vote us as one of the best community colleges in the nation. So, and the biggest reason I think, I believe personally, that uh, we get those accolades is because of the study center. Um, if a student is struggling, they can come in here and, we'll, and the study center sets them up with tutors um, to get them through uh, what they need help with. Uh, when I was a student here many moons ago, um, you know, I was struggling with math. I didn't do well with math. And so um, I came down and I asked for a little bit of help and, and I, I got through the, the, through the class um, and I think I got a B plus in that class if I remember right. And I know I totally would have bombed that class if I wouldn't have came down to the study center. So if you start needing a little Alex extra help here, it's here. Because everybody wants to help you in the school. Um, and so you know we want to make sure you get out the door with that piece of paper. So if you start struggling, come to the study center, we'll, they'll set you up. Um, I mentioned the TRIO program. The TRIO program is a government granted program. Um, and what it is, is I, I like to jokingly say it's the study center on steroids. It's just a little extra help. Um, you know, there's a little bit more time talking with uh, counselors and stuff. And uh, where it's a government granted program, you do have to apply for TRIO. But I encourage all students when they come to the college here to come down and talk with TRIO and apply, even if you're not sure if you qualify for it. Um, come down and apply anyways, because um, you know it's a great resource to have, and a lot of people qualify and they don't even realize it. So, and another big advantage of TRIO is scholarship opportunities. Um, TRIO gives out a, a lot of scholarship money every year, so come down, apply, and like I said, if you qualify, it, it's a great advantage to you know to, to take take advantage of, I should say, and um, it gives you opportunities to get scholarships, which is always great, free money, right? So um, so yeah, the study center. Make, make sure you you know, you stop by if you need any help. Um, next stop we're going to make is down to residential commercial electricity, so we'll head down there right now. So here we are in the Residential Commercial Electricity Programs shop. Um, one of our most popular programs at the moment, and the biggest advantage of this program is why we get so many students coming up is it's one of the, it's the only program in Maine that is one year, and the state of Maine deems that in that one year while you're here learning, you'll learn just as much as you would anywhere in two years. And so they, when you graduate the program, you actually get half your journeyman's time. So 4,000 hours towards your journeyman's license. Um, so students interested in becoming electricians um, really come up and take advantage of our program for, you know, you only spend one year of tuition and, um, you know, going on. But if you decide you want to get an associate's degree while you're here, there's, um, we also have a program called um, Electromechanical Instrumentation Technology. And that's kind of its own standalone uh, associate degree, um, but also it's a second year uh, option for the residential commercial electricity uh, program students to be able to get their associate degree. And you do a lot of uh, time in the shop here. And so, um, you know, if you're a student in either program, you know, you'll see uh, a lot of shop space. For the electrical students, each student has their own booth. They're going to be in here wiring in a bunch of different things, like things changing here pretty much every day almost. And so um, students spend a lot of time in the shop. I believe uh, what I've been told is WCCC actually has uh, shop time wise the most time in the shop. You spend 20 hours minimum a week in your shop. So, um, so like I said, you're gonna be in your classroom for a little bit when you first get here, you know, like in the mornings or in the afternoon. Um, you know, whenever your class is, because how the trades work, real quickly, is the schedule is Monday, Wednesday, Friday mornings, 8 to 12, Tuesday, Thursday afternoons, 1 to 5. Um, the only um, exception to that is the heavy equipment program in the fall, first fall semester, um, but I'll talk about that a little later. Um, so, like I said, so you spend your time here, do a little time in the classroom, and then you come out in the shop and spend most of the majority of the time uh, while you're in the shop out here. So, um, you know, great program, uh, very popular program right now, and, um, and they do an excellent job getting you ready to be an electrician. So, um, next stop on the tour, 
is auto technology and so we'll head down there right now so here we are in the uh, automotive technology program shop um, so basically one year program and you're going to be in here learning everything from bumper to bumper uh, the instructor Ronnie O'Brien does a great job getting you through really fast paced uh, program but that's what makes it interesting you know you spend a lot of time in the shop learning um, and doing what you're learning and um, you'll go like I said from bumper to bumper drivetrain um, front end alignments uh, and some engine le electrical HVAC like I said all the way down through so um, so great program to learn if you want to work as a, a mechanic um, we have students working in dealerships uh, their own garages, smaller service stations, and even in uh, parts stores and stuff, you know, so, um, you know, a wide variety of uh, jobs available once you take the program. Uh, one thing I do want to point out for any students thinking about coming into the automotive technology program or are coming into the automotive technology program, uh, or any of the mechanical programs, mechanical technology programs, uh, is tools. Now, you're going to, uh, you'll, you can find tool lists if you haven't already got one. If you uh, you're in a certain program uh, in the trades and you want to know uh, what tools you're going to need, you can jump on our website, go into programs of study, and find the program you're coming into. And usually, um, like I said, if it's a trade, usually you'll find right underneath the, the title of the the program uh, a little blue link that you can click on, and you click on it'll bring up a tool list. Um, obviously, auto tech, uh, engine specialists, uh, heavy equipment maintenance. Um, some of the pro mechanical programs are going to have a pretty extensive tool list um, and you can find it, like I said, if you haven't got it already, find it right on the website. Um, the one thing I want to point out is, is um, they don't have to be brand new tools. If you have tools at home or your dad, your uncle, your grandfather, your grandmother, whoever has some tools that you, they can give you, um, bring them. If they're a little bit of rust on them, don't worry about it as long as they work, you know, so don't, um, don't worry about that. Um, but if you do have to buy some newer tools, um, don't run out as soon as you get the tool list and buy the tools at full price. Um, the biggest advantage we have here for our students is we have national vendors come in the first week of classes. You're not going to need tools your first week of classes no matter what program you're in because um, it's mostly safety in the first week. So those vendors come in and they talk to the students. They know our tool lists and they know exactly what you're going to need. Uh, so you can go down and, and, and point out what you need, if, if it's the whole tool list or only a few things. And a lot of these vendors are offering um, 50 to 60 percent off. That's a that's a huge advantage. I, I know some stores will say, "Oh, come on in. If you're a student, we'll give you a 10 or 20 percent discount." I uh, I would highly suggest save your money, wait till you get here, uh, if you need to buy tools, and talk to those national vocational vendors because uh, we have Snap-on, uh, GearWrench, Craftman, Napa, we have a bunch of different ones come in. So wait and talk to them, take advantage of it, get those discounts, and um, you know that way you're saving some money. Um, but like I said, if you have tools already, don't run out and buy brand new ones, bring them with you, and, and um, you can use those and even if you know if you uh, don't have the tools uh, right away when you get here even when some classes start in the shop uh, the program does have some tools you know in the tool room so not having your full tool list does not you know stop you from taking your classes Ronnie's really good about um, you know if a student needs a little extra time getting their tools and stuff um, you know there are tools here, especially like I said in the automotive technology shop. There's a lot of tools in the tools shop, so don't don't let that discourage you if you're not going to be able to get all your tools on the tool list right away. So, um, but so yeah, this is the automotive technology shop, um, and the next stop we're going to make our way up towards the the, the 500s, and we'll stop by uh, the Karen cupboard and then head down for plumbing and heating technology, uh, welding technology, and engine specialists. So we'll head that way right now. Come on with me. So here we are in the Karen Cupboard. Uh, the Karen Cupboard is our on-campus on um, food pantry uh, for any student living in the dorms or uh, even commuters. If they need a, uh, need a little help uh, stocking their shelves or need a few extra things around the dorm or in their house, um, we're, we, if we have it, it's open for students to come in and um, take advantage of. Um, so, you know, like I said, students living in the dorms, you will be cooking for yourself on the weekend. So if you need to grab a few things to help you get through the weekend, make sure you come down and see Bernadette or one of the student ambassadors working here in the Karen cupboard. 
and talk to them about what, what's available. Uh, next stop, we're going to head right up to uh, plumbing technology and the heating technology program shop. So come on with me. So now we're in the plumbing technology and heating technology uh, programs uh, shop. Um, these programs um, run a little different than our other programs. All of our other trades run yearly. Um, our plumbing program and our heating program run bi-yearly, which means uh, this fall coming up, say, is um, heating technology. Um, that means the next fall would be plumbing technology, and then so on and so forth. So then, you know, and so they rotate that way. Same instructor for both. Um, and a lot of the students taking one program will usually stay and do the second year of the other one because they go so very well together. But um, but and don't have to. You know, they're all both one year certificates. Uh, the plumbing program. Um, you know, you're going to learn everything to get your journeyman's in plumbing. And as you can see. Uh, in the shop. Our students actually spend their time out here um, with roughing in uh, bathrooms in different situations. Uh, so you see upstairs is all mock, you know, building bathrooms in. So they put the toilets and the, and the sinks and stuff in up there. Down below would be, you know, the simulated basement. Uh, so they run all the piping and stuff for that and um, get them all ready. And like I said, all right, when you finish the year, you can take your journeyman's test. Um, for heating technology, um, you can see, um, you know, they're, they're working on everything for different heat sources for houses and businesses. Uh, so anything from hot water boiler to hot air, um, they get into heat pumps, propane heaters, everything like that. So, um, so uh, great programs. Uh, right now, like, uh, um, both programs are very high demand, so anybody watching this just to see kind of what the campus looks like and you're not really 100% sure what you want to do, if you like working with your hands, um, don't count out plumbing and heating. You know, plumbing especially right now is one of the most sought out, um, you know, employment in Maine. Um, so plumbers are in high, high demand. So like I said, if you're not really sure what you want to do, but you like working with your hands, um, you know, plumbing is, is a great, and heating too, because we live in Maine, it's cold here longer than it is warm, so there's always going to be a demand for heat tech, so two great programs to get into. Um, and um, next stop, another great program to get into, welding technology, uh, so we'll head up that way right now. So here we are in the welding technology programs shop. Um, one of those, this is one of those shops where this is probably the quietest you'll ever hear it. Um, and um, this program is a little different than our other programs. This is, this is a three semester program, uh, program. So welders actually come in in July and they have the run of the campus until the other students get here um, in the end of August. So um, they come in and in the summer session they're going to learn um, stick. Uh, they start out with like the torches and everything like that and then they move on to stick. Fall semester they move into MIG spring semester they work in the TIG and everything they're doing in here is preparing them to take their American Well Society um, certifications and um, the, great, the great thing about this program is Scott the instructor um, he's, he's going to get you ready to pass your American Well Society um, certifications but he's also going to get you ready to pass um, on the job training um, testing basically so um, as you might know if you're into the welding um, stuff you know, you can have your American Well Society um, certifications, but most places you go in and apply for a job at, they're going to give you their own test, you know. And so um, we want to get you ready so you can pass any test you run into so you can get that job you want. Um, and the thing about welding is, you know, is practice, practice, practice. Um, the great thing about this program, too, is, is it's, uh, it's set up to go at the student's pace. So what that means is uh, if a student comes in, he's taking a few years, uh, he or she is taking a few years of welding at, the, uh, at a tech center, high school tech center, or even if they've worked in, you know, in, the, in the field a little bit, but they're coming back to kind of hone their stuff. Um, or if somebody comes in the door, has never struck an arc in their life, doesn't, hasn't done anything with welding, but they want to learn. Uh, each person goes at their own pace, so that means uh, if somebody comes in and uh, if a student hasn't struck an arc in their life, um, they're not going to make the person that's already had a few years experience feel like they have to kind of wait for that person to catch up, 
But it also, the great thing is, is if that, for that person that's never struck an arc in their life, um, they're not going to feel like they have to keep up for the person that's already done it for a few years. Everybody works at their own pace. So um, I feel like that's a great advantage of this program. And, and the other great advantage is, is you're going to get your stick, your MIG, and your TIG take all in the one year so um, and you know get you ready to go to work so a great advantage great shop like you said um, very busy shop usually and um, and so the next shop we're going to go to is our engine specialist program so we'll head that way right now so here we are in our engine specialist programs shop um, engine specialist uh, is working only on engines um, usually the, this shop will be full of of uh, people uh, with engines on jack stands, tearing them down. Fall semester, um, it's all diesel. Uh, this program actually has their own diesel engines, and so students um, diagnose them, see, see what went wrong with them, and then they spend the fall semester tearing them down and putting them back together and getting them running again. So, um, so it's all diesel, and then the spring semester, the great thing about the program is um, one of the requirements of the program, I should say, is students actually bring their own engine in for the spring semester. So many uh, students, when they come back from Thanksgiving break or Christmas break, uh, will bring back a usable core and a rebuild kit. And then they spend, starting in January, they start tearing down and getting everything cleaned up, bored out, stroked, whatever they want to do to it. And, and by the end of the semester, um, they have it all back together and basically kind of like their final is their engine running and all tuned up and ready to go. Um, and then when they graduate, that engine goes with them. And so, and so it, when they drive away, they got their toolbox, they got their engine, and they're ready to go. Um, so students can pick whatever engine they want. They could be another diesel or it can be uh, a, a gas-powered engine. Um, we've seen some pretty interesting... Um, uh, engines built here over the years and uh, it's always fun to see what the students uh, come up with what they want to do. Um, fall semester is a little bit busier because because um, uh, the, uh, the heavy equipment maintenance program actually has some students in here and I'll explain why when we get over to the heavy equipment program shops but um, but and then in the spring semester it's just the engine specialist students in here so um, it's a little busier in the fall spring is a little bit more roomier but um, students like you said, they're just in here working on their engine all, all day long. So, um, great program and, um, you know, great advantage to, uh, to learn this stuff if you plan on being in the, in the industry. So, uh, next stop, we're going to head over to, uh, we're actually going to a different building. It's called Howland Hall. And um, that houses our heavy equipment program, our power sports program, and our CAD classroom. So, we'll head over that way right now. So on the way over to Howland Hall, I figured I'd point out that uh, the campus, if you've never really been to Callis or to Washington County before, we are uh, on the border of New Brunswick. Um, so the campus actually sits on the historic St. Croix River, and just across the river is St. Stephen, New Brunswick. Um, also, the great thing is, is we have 400 acres of land here, and that butts up against uh, a national wildlife refuge. So... Um, so there's plenty of trails, plenty, plenty of things to do outdoors, snowmobiling, hiking, uh, mountain biking. So uh, lots of things to do here, You're leaving right from campus, and, uh, and just a beautiful, it's a beautiful spot. So now we're inside Howland Hall. Uh, this whole building has recently been renovated, uh, all brand new. Uh, um, classrooms and uh, some of the shops have been totally redone so um, we're going to head down to our CAD classroom and uh, check that out so come on down with me. So here we are in our CAD classroom computerized aided drafting and um, this program um, if you're in a trade like welding, uh, electrical, plumbing and heating, um, even just the one-year certificate, you will take a CAD classroom uh, class, should say, and um, it's basically just the modern-day blueprinting: how to read a blueprint or a schematic of a, of a building, or how to design a, a blueprint for for a building. And um, it's something you're going to be working with a lot in the industry, so um, so it's required for those programs. But 
even if you're taking a two-year associate's degree in mechanical trades, you'll end up taking a CAD class as part of that. Um, great thing about this program, or this class, I should say, is um, it's very interesting and it's very fun. The, the, the instructor, Randy, makes it uh, a, a learning experience uh, that's enjoyable. So, you know, it's, it's, most people, when they first hear about it, they're kind of like, oh, you know, but then once they're in here, they, they can't wait to come back every day or whatever days they have class. Um, and it's, a, it's an actually a great um, thing to learn, and many people enjoy it. So um, Next thing we're going to go down to is our heavy equipment operation shop, and then we'll work our way over to maintenance and then down to power sports. So we'll head that way right now. So here we are inside the heavy equipment operations uh, program sh shop. Um, some pieces of equipment in here for the for the summer, but eventually they'll make their way out to the uh, to the pit. Um, all of our piece, all of our equipment here on campus will make its way back out to the pit. The uh, we have our own pit on a national wildlife refuge, and it's about 11 miles from campus. And the students will spend their whole fall semester. It doesn't matter if they're in operations or maintenance, out to the pit. Um, and uh, while they're there, they learn how to run every piece of equipment. We have about 30 pieces of equipment, so um, ranging from bulldozers, dump trucks, excavators, uh, graders, everything you're going to run into mostly in the excavation field. And, um, and so each student runs each piece of equipment, learns how to run them all, and once they're good at running the equipment in the pit, they actually get sent out on projects on the wildlife refuge. The wildlife refuge has about 50 to 55 miles of road and uh, our students actually help their maintenance crew by going around and doing everything from totally redoing roads that have been washed out by like beaver um, flowages or something uh, to replacing culverts to sometimes it's just moving different uh, kiosks and everything around um, the different, different parts of the, uh, the refuge. Um, and once they come back in here uh, in the spring semester, they spend time in the shop. They do a little bit of time in the classrooms, but then they spend time here in the shop. And um, for operations, where we are right now, um, this is a brand new garage. Just like I mentioned before, it was newly renovated. Um, and this is what they call a super garage. That way it's big enough so we can pull in an 18-wheeler with a trailer, with a piece of equipment on the trailer, all the way in and shut the doors. And it also allows us, uh, with the high ceilings, to bring a dump truck in, be able to put the bed up, and not take out the ceiling, basically, you know. So uh, students will be learning in operation in the spring semester. They learn general maintenance on the equipment. Uh, they learn forklift operation, and they'll actually get their forklift operator's license um, while they're in the program. Um, and then they also learn uh, the basics of uh, cranes and boom trucks and um, they learn all the different aspects of the excavation field of operating. Um, so they learn how to plan out roads or parking lots or driveways uh, so the water flows right and everything like that. Because obviously you don't want to, you want drainage to be right because you don't want a big swimming pool in the middle of your parking lot. So they learn how to do all that and set up um, all the different equipment to be able to landscape it out and um, know what they're doing there. And then. Um, and then, like I said, they spent a lot of time out here in the spring doing general maintenance on the equipment that came in from the pit in the fall. So, um, Next shop we're going to go to is the heavy equipment maintenance shop, which is right next door. So we'll head over there right now. Now we're in our, in our heavy equipment maintenance program shop. Um, basically what goes on in here in the spring semester is students are in here um, learning the bumper to bumper maintenance on all the pieces of equipment. Uh, when I say the bumper to bumper, it's kind of metaphorical. It's uh, you know, the excavator, it's from bucket to bumper. But, uh, but they learn how to work on all the pieces of equipment that we have in the program. Um, mostly because the, those, those equipment that, uh, that gets used at the pit during the fall semester is actually the program's equipment. We don't lease equipment, so uh, anything breaks. Uh, our students um, fix it. So, um, so the shop during the, the spring is is full of the equipment that came in from the, the pit, and they're working on getting it ready for the next fall semester for the students that are coming in. Then, um, real quickly, I just want to explain something about the heavy equipment program. Um, they're, this, they're both the heavy equipment operation and the heavy equipment maintenance. 
uh, programs are both separate one-year certificate programs, but um, most of our students decide to do the two-year option, and there is an advantage to that. Um, the reason I say that is because um, if you do the one year of operation, you come in, you, you go out to the pit, and you learn how to run the equipment, and then you come in and you learn all the different things that I mentioned before. Um, if you come into maintenance, uh, after you get down the pit, you got to come in here and you're going to learn, like I said, the bumper to bumper stuff, but you're not really going to learn anything about the engine or anything like that. Um, with the two year option, students come back the second year, it doesn't matter if they started in maintenance or started their first year in operation, they come back their second year and they actually go into our engine specialist program. I, I mentioned it before when we were in the, that shop, that heavy equipment um, students uh, in their second year in the fall, they go into that program because they don't need to go back out to the pit, they already know how to run all the equipment, so they go in and learn how to tear down and rebuild diesel engines in the engine specialist program. Um, during the fall semester. Spring semester they come back and they, they take whatever classes they haven't taken. So if they've taken a lot of maintenance classes they come back the second spring take their operation classes or vice versa. Uh, another advantage is too with the two-year option is part of that two-year option is you get a 40-hour welding course on stick and make so you know how to weld on the equipment. Um, you know you'll learn how to, to weld on site and here in the shop so um, another great advantage. So the two-year option very popular um, choice for students because um, a lot of the, the construction companies um, know this program and they like when their students, uh, when our students that go to work for them have all that, that knowledge and that experience. Um, so many of them, um, uh, like our students work for these different companies during the summer. Um, a lot of those companies will encourage our students to go back and take the second year because it just makes them more employable, makes them a better employee and that way they'll know the operation side but they also know how to work on stuff if something breaks. So, um, and it's an advantage to the, to the uh, student because when they are hired um, it just makes them uh, more work for them, more paycheck. You know, so um, the two year option is, uh, is a great uh, option and a very popular option. but not a necessity. You don't have to do both years, but um, a lot of students do choose to do that. So, um, so we're going to make our way over to Power Sports now and check that out and then eventually we'll make our way up to the dorms. So come on, come on with me. So here we are in the classroom of our Power Sport Equipment Small Inch Technician Program. And uh, when you take this program, you're learning how to work on everything in between snowmobiles, four-wheelers, side-by-side, motorcycles, outboards, all the way down to chainsaws, generators, lawnmowers, um, the whole gamut of small engines. Um, Greg Johnson does a great job and um, students actually spend quite a bit of time in here in the classroom learning, uh, working on the smaller equipment here. Um, then they work their way out to the shop um, and we'll head out there right now. Check that out. So here we are in the shop area uh, where the students work on the bigger equipment, uh, four-wheelers, snowmobiles, side-by-side, stuff like that. Um, and once the students um, get used to working on equipment, this actually is uh, treated as a real shop. Um, the instructor, Greg Johnson, brings in live work from the public, so people that need something fixed can bring it down to the college and the students actually work on it. So uh, students will fill out invoices and order parts and everything they're going to run into when they go into the industry uh, working at a job. So a great advantage for them to get used to that uh, and uh, a good advantage for the public around here to be able to get some things worked on. So uh, the next thing we're going to do is head up to the, the dorms. So we'll take a look at those and um, we'll see a few things along the way. So um, let's head up there right now. So one of the stops I wanted to show you along the way to the dorms is our Outdoor Adventure Center. Uh, the Outdoor Adventure Center is located at the lower part of the lower dorms and what it is is the students that are attending WCCC could come in uh, during the good weather, they can come in and sign out uh, canoes, kayaks, stand up paddle boards, uh, camping gear like tents, sleeping bags, cooking gear, uh, there's mountain bikes you can sign out. Um, so uh, a bunch of stuff you can come in and grab uh, for the winter time. Uh, they have ice skates, uh, snowshoes, cross country skis, a little bit of ice fishing gear. So um, Washington County is a, is a great place to do outdoor activities and we make it easier for our students to take advantage of, 
of uh, the opportunities by coming in and signing out um, equipment for free. For students sign out for free. Uh, another thing is on co on campus we have a nine hole disc golf course, and um, the students can take advantage of that. It's a fun activity, and if they don't already have their own discs, they can come into the outdoor adventure center and sign out some. So please take advantage of the outdoor adventure center while you're here on campus. So we're entering the dorms, the lower level dorms. And on the lower level of the dorms, um, when you enter, we have the gym down here, um, different pieces of equipment. We, keep, we get different pieces of equipment all the time, so um, pretty much it seems like every time I come in here um, doing a tour, uh, there's something different, something new. So uh, the gym is open from 7 in the morning until 11 at night, so um, we encourage students to take advantage of that. Uh, like I said, a lot of machines, some free weights, some dumbbells. Um, and it's only for student use, so you know you don't have to worry about you know being in here working out and somebody random coming in from the, the public or anything um, using it too. So it's just you and your fellow students. And then I'll show you. This is the laundry room. Um, there's two sets of dorms, um, so the upper dorms have their own laundry room. But I'll show you this one here, the lower dorms. Um, they are corn operated, but uh, they're only set for a dollar. So a dollar to use the washing machine, a dollar to use the dryer, um, which is pretty affordable compared to like a laundromat. Some, some laundromats want three or four bucks to use a washing machine nowadays. So a dollar is not too bad, but you will want to make sure you bring some change with you. If you're living in the dorms, so you can do your laundry. Um, and like I said, the other set of dorms has a laundry room, so if you live in the upper dorms, you don't have to carry your laundry all the way down to the lower dorms to do your laundry, um, so um, it has its own one up there. So We'll head upstairs to the Igloo Lounge. So this is the Igloo Lounge. Um, just a meeting place for students, um, even though every dorm room is an apartment. Um, you know, sometimes students just like to get together and hang out in here. Uh, you got pool tables, air hockey tables, ping pong, um, used to be a foosball table that might be somewhere. Um, you know, big couch, big screen TV, stereo system. So, um, you know, you come in here a lot in the, during the day or in the evenings and uh, students are, are taking advantage of this area. Um, Res Life has a lot of stuff going on here for student activities. So, um, so very highly used area. Uh, there's pool tournaments every week. Um, you could you could uh, play in a tool per, uh, pool tournament and win some uh, like gas cards usually or something. So um, so very highly used area. Uh, also the RAs uh, office is in here. So um, you know if you have something sent to the college, uh, say you order something on Amazon or something and you want to send here, um, it comes to the school. The Res Life people will grab it from the shipping area and bring it up here. And they'll let you know if you have a package and you can come in here and pick it up. So, um, so, and they usually have popcorn going. A little quiet this time of year, obviously, but, um, but uh, the soda machines, uh, snack machines, so if you need a you know, soda or sugar fix or caffeine fix, like I like to say, uh, you know, you, don't, you can come in and grab some. Uh, but yeah, we'll head over and check out a dorm. So this is our dorm. This is a this is actually our show and tell dorm. I call it. Um, so mo a lot of the other dorms have been updated. This one's a little older. Um, so the newer ones uh, won't have this wood wood on the walls or anything, and uh, they'll have a bathroom door and everything. But um, but each dorm is an apartment, very good size apartment. A lot of people are surprised how big they are. So you got your own living room, you got your kitchen, uh, kitchen, your stove, uh, refrigerator, cabinets, and everything. So um, it's a full full kitchen. And uh, tell you one of the great things is is you know your view from the dorms. Uh, a lot of people have a great view right from their either their front windows or their kitchen windows out over the river and over looking over to Canada. Um, two of the rooms are doubles and as you can see you know the two-person room very 
very spacious, you know, you like to say, compared to if you go and check out uh, dorm rooms at universities and stuff, this is, this would probably house, you know, like this would be two dorm rooms, but, you know, then for the size wise. So, as you can see, plenty of room. Um, each person has their own closet, their own work desk, their own bureau or dresser, whatever you want to call it. And, um, you know, each room has Wi Fi and, and uh, some of them have cables. So, um, you know, a lot of room in here. There is one single room, and pretty much, because uh, we get this question a lot how do I get the single room? Um, it's, you know, if you have a medical condition and you have the paperwork for it and everything, yeah, we, uh, you know, the Res Life people will set you up if you need a single room. Um, or, you know, sometimes if a student's a second year student, housed with some first years, the second year automatically gets the single room. Um, also, if you're one of your roommates is an RA, uh, they get a single room because they have a, a busy schedule. So, uh, but if it's four or five, you know, first years, random, um, the res life just basically comes in and pulls names and puts them on the door. Uh, on your res residential um, application for the dorms, um, you can put down that you want a certain person for a roommate. If a friend of yours that you went to school with is coming here too, um, you can mark on your application that you, if you're going to be a, um, you know, in a double room, you'd rather have a roommate you know. As long as the other person puts you on theirs, um, they'll put you together, which a lot of people do. You know, So if you have a friend that you went to school with that are coming here too, um, you can request to be their roommate. Um, so we do have that too, but a lot of times it's just random random toys. Uh, sometimes they, they uh, put programs together too. Um, so you might have some people that are um, in the same types of programs. So you have like something in common basically. So, um, so yeah, this is the dorms. You've pretty much seen the whole campus. Uh, we do have one other building called uh, St. Croix Hall. Uh, if you become a student, you'll see plenty of it during orientation. Um, but it just basically uh, is a houses our we have a gymnasium like with a basketball court and everything and an indoor rock climbing wall and so um, so the students can you know, take advantage of that um, but like I said you'll see plenty of that and there's a lecture hall over there it gets used once in a while for classes and everything so um, but um, but that's pretty much the little campus very small very small campus I know it probably doesn't seem like it when we walk around all the different hallways but very small, very manageable. Um, you, you know, like when I was a student here, I knew pretty much where everything was when the, at the end of the first, maybe second day. Um, so very, very easy to navigate. You know, very small campus, and um, you know the great advantage of a small campus is um, very friendly. All everybody's on first name basis uh, from the president down, and so uh, your instructor is Ronnie or Scott or. or Molly or whoever you know this is so um, it's a lot all first name um, so it's a great environment to learn and really is and great location um, like I said very small and that's the advantage you know the small school our students do very well um, we get voted pretty much every year if not every other year by different organizations one of the best community colleges in the United States and so we take that with pride and um, yeah this has been the tour and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, we're, like I said, we're a small school, so give us a call. Um, you can find all our information right on our website. Uh, we have an email. You can email us questions if you have any questions. Um, but like I said, we're here and um, during the week. And give us a call if you have any questions. Thanks for joining me.